Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Benjamin. And if you are looking for a place where you can learn how to build different types of powerful applications without writing any code at all, this is the right place for you. Now, two years ago, when I first started my journey with Flutterflow and Firebase, it was so confusing and so hard to understand collections, documents, all these terms when it comes to building a backend, which is very important. And you hear some developers talk about how, you know, um, Firebase is really, really expensive if you don't know how to use it. And if you don't know how to properly model your database and you push your app out there, at some point it can break because you don't know how to do it properly. It was scary. But two years down the line, after really um, taking up different kind of challenges and really mastering Firebase, base i am here to answer many of these beginner questions that come across my table right so let's get started so firstly let's try and break down some of the most common words you're going to hear when you're working with firebase and flutter flow you're going to hear collections documents thrown around a lot of times and why because collections are sections where you can store different files about different things in your app so you're going to have a collection for this a collection for that and i'm sure you've worked with it before probably now let me try and explain it to you right but i would suggest that you also read flutterflow's documentation and their guide as you watch this video or after you watch this video so the first thing you need to know is i think of a music app right and in a music app you can create playlists you can have playlists for sad songs happy songs christmas songs christmas is around the corner right now you know whatever you want to create a playlist for and in those playlists you're going to have different songs that match the theme of what that playlist is all about that is an example of how collections and documents work right so basically you are going to have different areas in your app where you store different things a group of related data for example a user's collection where you store all your users information there and they'll have different attributes of that data for example the songs in your playlist will have things like song title the lyrics of the song things like that now one question that you're going to ask as a beginner is why can't i have a document and i store so many information inside one document right instead of storing many documents inside of a collection and the question is in that music app it's going to be chaotic to search for a particular song that you want and i i, I think this is not just a, a a question of why is it not possible or not it's technically it can be possible but firebase working with firebase and that's one thing you need to know when you're building with firebase you build the firebase way firebase has rules you will, you will not be able to query or really search for information properly if it's modeled up in one document but if it is distributed or divided across multiple documents in one collection you'll be able to find it better so if you have one song that is um jingle bells or you have one song that we wish you have um, a merry christmas things like that you're going to be able to find them easily when they are separate documents Okay, so the second question that I had as a beginner, right, was when do I create collections? When do I need a collection in my app, right? And I've already said that the collection is a group of related data, but it still wasn't ringing in my head and it might be an issue for you too. So the answer to that is a formula, a device. You need to understand all the features that you want. Write it down, get it from your head and on paper, what are all the features I need, even down to the next few years, right? This is how you build smart. So for example, let's say you have a social media app and you want everybody to have a feed where they like posts and things like that like instagram now in the beginning you might just release it right so that every anybody can just um see any post that is available in the app because you might not have that many users and not might not have that many posts but let's let's say in the future you want to have a personalized feed right where people see only things that they like or something like that so that they can engage on the app more now it can be smart that even when you release the first version of the app without any feature of personalized feeds, you can still be collecting information about all what your users like based on category. So, for example, if, if a post has a cat tag or a cat category, you know, anytime they like it or they keep engaging on it or they keep watching it for a long period of time, you save that category somewhere. And then later, when you want to add that feature, you call that um, wherever you save that data you in your app and then bam you have a personalized feed and your users love your app even more this is the way you think and you plan well and in those features that you have in your app there are major features that will always need you or users to always keep creating something new right and let me give you an example so in that post app in that social media app users will always need to keep creating new posts and you need to have those posts the, um, you need to be able to search for those posts easily you need to always be able to get those posts very very quickly you need to know okay this is user a or user b that created this particular post that's what you call querying searching you need to be able to search for those posts very very easily obviously even in your app you might have a search button where people search for posts the moment you know that oh in terms of querying right and in terms of creating data you are going to have to have a lot of uploads like that 
just know that you need a collection right so now that we've answered that let's practice let's say we have a chat app we want users to be able to chat in our application now the features that we would need obviously is that users should have chats and then those chats are going to have messages now how do we know that we're going to have chats and we're going to have messages if you look at any chat app that you see if you look at it you see a bunch of chats you see a whole lot of chats right and when you click on a particular chat you see a whole lot of messages that's the way it works so these are the two main features of our application apart from the fact that we're going to have a lot of users now you can see i'm saying a lot a lot that means users are going to, anytime a user comes on our app and they click on um, sign in or sign up they're going to be creating something and they're going to be creating their own users data they will be saving things like their name things like that we also we know that we need a users collection now when users come and then they see a particular friend that they like and they click on that friend or maybe they add a couple of people to a group we know that that user is creating a new chat right because you see remember chats now when they now start typing and then they create a new message right you know that the user is creating a new message so obviously the users have to be a collection right based on this information on how much data um on the fact that users have to create something new and they're always going to be engaging with it creating something new like that and we need to be able to find this information very very easily this is just this is a simple rule guys right and then one other thing that you need to know also is that if you have a bunch of messages for example right and you are saving that messages for like in reference to a chat imagine if you are saving all those messages inside one document for example because some people are always asking about that thing um how much can i save inside a document you know you cannot save more than one mb of data inside the document but now one mb of data normally as text because you're always going to be saving information as text in firebase you can check it out even images things like that they're all text saved somewhere else right so you can save a whole lot of data even down to almost a whole test book in, inside firebase in one document but the issue is finding that data right if you have a bunch of messages just saved in um a list or just in one document it might be hard to be able to do other things in your app for example when you want to delete it or you want to reference it specially somewhere it can be very very difficult to do things like this but if you have it as a document each message is a document you'll be able to do a whole lot with it in the future you might be able to add more features for a particular message maybe you want a message to do this or do that the idea is not, it's not it depends on your, your app right and it depends on your features so, so remember this was just a short video to explain how firebase works in a very simple way right um just remember that you have to write out all the features that you have in your app then look for features that require a lot of generating data right and then in fact if you need to and most times you need to find that data easily query that data easily you would need to have great collections right to store those different data but for now take what you've learned here and practice with it in the comment section you can ask your questions right and i'll answer or make you can even suggest videos i should make make sure you leave a like to support this <laughs> this channel right thank you